Hello world and welcome to our channel Radically New Life. This video is a follow-up to another one of our videos about the Word of God doctrine, which explains how professing Christians use the teachings of the Apostle Paul to argue against the teachings of the Word of God, which is Jesus. In this video, we will focus on one particular verse from Paul that is used over and over by professing Christians to disregard several key teachings of Jesus about forsaking all of our possessions and even our families if they will not come along with us in our loving service for God. When we share with people about the commands of Jesus to work for God instead of money and to literally forsake everything, we typically hear the same kind of arguments over and over again. People claim that we are trying to break families apart simply because we are pointing to the teachings of Jesus. Sometimes people will even argue that by teaching these things we are actually turning people away from God. But these people aren't always immediately opposed to Jesus' teachings. Some of them are thrilled when they discover the teachings of Jesus for the first time. But what usually comes next is a period of anxiety and fear that can be quite powerful. With patience and love, we try to get them to see that we have been in the exact same position ourselves when we first discovered the radical teachings of Jesus. This is the period of time that we refer to as counting the cost, which can be found in Luke 14 verses 25 to 34. When people begin to understand that Jesus really means what he says, they only have two choices before them. One is to fully embrace his teachings, no matter what it costs them personally, and the other is to deny God's will and ultimately turn away. It's a sad fact, but most often people will choose the second option to turn against all that Jesus taught. And then they begin to turn on us for trying to teach people that God actually wants them to obey Jesus. Now, this is often the point where every justification for disobedience to Jesus is presented to us by the same people who had previously shown some good signs of wanting to become a follower of Jesus. Since these people cannot accept the fact that they cannot be a Christian due to their dismissal of Jesus' teachings, they go looking for various proof texts in other parts of the Bible in a vain attempt to strengthen their opposition to Jesus' teachings. Of course, they will claim that they are sincere followers of Jesus, but when it is clear that they are not interested in His standards of what it means to be a Christian, they will scour their Bibles, consult with their religious leaders, spend hours on the internet looking for some sort of escape clause, which they hope will free them from the demands that Jesus makes on any would-be follower. And lo and behold, this is where the Apostle Paul's teachings come in to save the day. Let's look at one particular verse from Paul's writings that could, at first glance, seem to challenge Jesus' teachings about forsaking all and living by faith. Here it is. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. There it is. This one verse has been used countless times to try and convince us that Jesus' teachings should not be taken seriously. As a matter of fact, this verse is meant to show the supposed heresy of Jesus' teachings about forsaking our possessions and even our families if they choose not to come along the path of obeying Jesus' teachings with us. So the false choice that these people create is between obeying Paul or obeying Jesus. What is amazing to us is that the bulk of what Jesus teaches about money, possessions, and families is spread throughout the Gospels in so many ways that you simply can't avoid their clear meaning. Whereas this one verse and only a couple others from Paul have to be pulled way out of context to presumably demolish any need for us to obey Jesus. We believe this is a desperate attempt by those who have been confronted with the teachings of Jesus to look for a loophole from Paul that really isn't there. Let's examine what the majority of professing Christians believe that the worse than an infidel verse from Paul is saying. In the mind of the average churchgoer, this passage from Paul about taking care of our families must mean that we have to have a paid job to provide for the material needs of our families. 
Even though Paul himself does not say anything about needing to work for money in order to do so. What we have to really consider is that Jesus himself taught things that go very much against our natural understanding about how we think the world should be. Since Jesus tells us that we must be willing to forsake our families for him, who are we to argue against his infinite wisdom, even if it seems hard to understand or accept at first? Look very closely at these verses from Jesus. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in this life and will inherit eternal life. Truly, I tell you, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come, eternal life. So in light of the first Timothy verse, how do we deal with these verses from Jesus that clearly say that we should forsake our families for God? After all, wouldn't this make Jesus worse than an infidel for teaching others to do what Paul has told us not to do? Wait a second, really think about this. Is Jesus Christ worse than an infidel? Here is where we think people need to get a much bigger picture, an eternal perspective. Let's look at the passages in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus tells us we can either work for God or we can work for money. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all the nations of the world seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. For those of you who have seen our other videos, we know it seems like we just keep hammering away about these verses over and over again, but oftentimes people can't see the truth even when it's right under their noses. In these verses, Jesus tells us not to worry because our real Father, our heavenly loving Father, knows what we need to survive, which is clothes, food, and even shelter. All of this is to get the point across that professing Christians are actually making God out to be worse than an infidel, since they have no faith that he can take care of his children, that is, those who obey his son. In fact, God has even promised to take care of us if we work for him instead of money, so of course God will provide for his children, because he is our loving father. Anyone who does not believe this obviously has more faith in money to provide for their family's needs than for the infinite creator of the universe to provide. Can you see that this is nonsense? 
So the question is, will you take Jesus seriously and trust that God will take care of you and your family? Or will you try to find a way to disregard everything Jesus taught?